Jason, on this show, we've yes. made it a point to talk about highlight highlighting underrepresented voices in sports. Mm-hmm. And one of those in in those sports world is black WNBA players, you know, representing that voice. What does that look like? Last year, Risa Sard, who is a researcher at UMass, found some stunning results when she and her team looked into how black WNBA players versus white WNBA players are promoted in the media. She's joining us now. Risa, welcome. Hi, welcome. Thanks so much for having me. So, no, thank you for coming here. So tell me about your study and what prompted you to to even take on this project. (laughs) Yeah, it's a great question. Um, And so admittedly, right, I kind of came to this research question um, last summer as, right, our our nation was in the midst of a racial reckoning. And I was scrolling through Twitter, um, as we all do in the midst of pandemics and racial reckonings, I guess. And I came across this tweet um, from an account I don't actually even think I followed. I think the Twitter algorithm just served it up to me um, by Michael McManus. And he had started reflecting on what he was seeing as a pattern of who the media was centering. And really, especially right in this moment of reckoning um, and started having these observations. And he had this like awesome thread and I just read it. And I felt particularly as a white person, like as a white WNBA fan, this isn't something that admittedly I had known that much about, had seen happening on my own. And I read it and I digested it. And I went throughout the rest of the summer and I started asking myself, do I see this now, right? Once Now that I've learned this, now that someone has brought this to my observation, can I see this happening? And, and it was pretty apparent that this is what was going on. Um, and it could not have been more apparent um, when my advisor at UMass sent me an email with an article that uh, was talking about sponsorships in the WNBA and some other things. And somewhere in like the fifth paragraph or whatever, just hidden, was this line that was talking about how the WNBA was having its most successful season yet Thanks to, and then it listed like three white players. And I was like, that that's just like kind of curious, right? Now that I have this in the back of my head, that this is what's happening throughout. And so I, I just shared this reflection. Hey, I've been thinking about this. Here's, you know, I learned about it from this person I read on Twitter, right? What do you think? And so that really kickstarted this research to say, can we quantify? Can we empirically kind of scientifically without a doubt say that that's what's happening? And then what you know, how does that influence maybe some of these other identities that players have? Um, and really, what is the role of race in this disparity? Yeah. Could tell us a little bit about your methodology and and the data and what it tells you. Absolutely. Um, so as a team, we had to decide, right, kind of where are we looking for this? How are we looking at it? And so ultimately, we landed on looking at online content from ESPN, CBS Sports, and Sports Illustrated. Um, Really notably, ESPN and CBS Sports were the official network partners of the WNBA uh, during the last 2020 season. So they made a lot of sense, right? Sports Illustrated, another kind of mainstream, long-time, you know, media outlet. So if you're looking at, like, what are these kind of typical um, dominant platform saying, right? That That's kind of some of the places that you look. And also importantly, right, all three of those platforms, they're not behind, their WNBA content is not behind paywall. So it's all publicly accessible, right? Like if you just Google what's going on, right, you're likely to find content um, from one of those sites. And so we narrowed down to looking at those platforms. Um, and then, you know, this research started because we were really interested in what was happening at a racial level. We also know, right, from being researchers who study diversity, equity, and inclusion in sports, um, that gender expression matters, sexual orientation matters, right? Like there's some of these other identities. And um, they don't just matter on their own, but they also matter, right, in combination with each other, what we as researchers yeah. would call intersectionality. And so um, that's what we tried to look at. We were able to measure race on a spectrum. Um, we had a panel of experts who who were able to kind of verify our coding, right? Saying this is what this player's, you know, race is that they're presenting as, that we read them as, which is how kind of the world reads them too. Um, so we could identify then who presents as white and who presents as black. Um, and we were also able to code their gender expression and kind of, you know, are they publicly out as queer or are they not out, which is also from a media perspective, the same thing as kind of being straight. So it's interesting because there's so many different factors and intersectionality is where the WNBA lives. And so I'm glad you brought that up. And one of the standout findings that you have was about Asia Wilson. And for those that need a reminder, you shouldn't, but she's our reigning WNBA MVP. She's a three-time All-Star, former NCAA champion. She has a statue outside of South Carolina. Like just to let people understand how big she is in women's sports, 
But I'm curious how much media attention did she receive? Because I see Asia on a lot of different things, but I'm just curious, where does she like meet when you're talking about a deep dive research? Because she's one of those names that should be all over everything, considering the things I just said. So I'm really curious to hear this. (laughs) Well, we were really surprised uh, that she received half as much media coverage as Sabrina Ionescu, right? And so Renee, on top of all the stats, all the accomplishments that you just listed, right? Asia Wilson played the entire WNBA season last year, all the way through all the finals, right? All the way to leading her team to the championship game. Um, Sabrina Ionescu played in three games before having a season ending injury. And so receiving half the amount of coverage, I I think is just not at all what you'd expect. And it's certainly not what the MVP deserves. And just to kind of This is not about Sabrina, just so people, you know, I want to lay things out so that people can understand that this deep dive is not about a one particular player. It's not about Asia. You know, it's not about Sabrina. It's about the media and how the media sends a message without sending a message. So I just wanted to kind of lay that out so people understand this isn't a her versus her. This is a we have stars in the league and Asia Wilson who I like, I didn't know that she only received half, but yeah. for her to be the reigning MVP, three time All Star, she, I mean, even recently, she was a huge part of our Team USA like run. So, I mean, I just, that's pretty shocking to hear for me. I appreciate you pointing this out. This, this isn't like a, a personal thing, right? This person versus that person, right? That's not how race works in this country, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. These are about systems and these are about layers and it is about narratives and it's about kind of um, where do we see general trends reflected perhaps easily captured in one place. But this was a trend that uh, took place across every player that played in the league last year. Um, Whenever studies like this are announced on social media, there's always like some amount of the response is always, well, of course, like, you know, this comports with, I think, our general reading of how the world works as, as specifically American society is this very white male centered society. What are, you mentioned uh, the layers and the structural underpinnings of this. Like what are the system of incentives, incentives and disincentives that cause this to occur? Yeah. It's a huge question. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, I think one thing to point out, right, is certainly on social media, people might say, well, isn't this just about like who the good players are or something, right? And so what's really important is that our analysis actually controlled for um, points and rebounds, right? We we accounted for on-court production. And even when you hold those things equal, you see a massive ca- like gap between the media coverage that white players are getting and that black players are getting. Um, and so, you know, I think what that represents is the just white centering, right, of our whole world, um, even in sports. Um, And it's super important because the way that, you know, media attention gets played into other things like sponsorships and endorsement deals and, right, it like becomes, um, I think maybe what you're getting at, right, is like it becomes a pay equity issue too, right? This this media attention transcends. It's not just about whose name gets said. Um, It becomes part of all these other equations and feeds into systems. Yeah, the thing that I keep thinking is, like, if I am, like, a low-level person in the PR department for the WNBA, right, and I have, like, certain accounts that I'm working on, and based on the success of those accounts, like, I will either continue my job or be fired, um, I am incentivized to go to, to row in the direction that the boat is heading, Right. How do we disentangle those things so that there is a more equitable covering of players in the W that more accurately reflects their accomplishments and success within the league, while also like somehow incentivizing this on like the granular level, like the people who are directly engaged in like this actual coverage? Yeah, I mean, I think right in your example of this WNBA, you know, employee or whatever, one of the things that's actually really interesting is that we also measured what was happening in WNBA press releases. And there was no racial bias to speak of in that coverage, right? So the press releases that the league is putting out, 
is basically race neutral as much as, you know, anything is race neutral. I maybe hesitate to say those words, but, um, you know, in in fact, the only thing that determined who got mentions in the WNBA press releases were offensive players. The more points you scored, the more media mentions you got. Maybe defensive players want to pick a, pick a bone with the league on that. That's cool. Uh, but you know, but, but I think it goes to show that like, this doesn't have to be the way that it is. Like if we report coverage, based on what's actually happening on the court, we can have more racially equitable coverage. She is a research fellow with the Laboratory for Inclusion and Diversity at UMass's Eisenberg School of Management. You can read more about her team's findings in the Sports Business Journal. Risa, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Thanks so much.